By now, you're probably used to me making a crazy pledge about a game I don't know, and then I... Oh! Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a little bit different for me in the sense that I'm not even streaming this game, but as I started playing it, I realized I really need to talk about this in a journal form. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to an unexpected journey through Hyrule, the first one that I will be documenting through these journals. And I gotta say, I'm really excited for this because the journal format that I make for my games is a great way for me to actually look back on the games I've played and remember details that I may otherwise forget. It's easy to forget the little things and the impressions that smaller parts of the game had on you when you go over these long hundred hour experiences. I'm now about 10 hours into Tears of the Kingdom, I'm guessing, and I've already had so many moments of, oh, that's cool, oh, what's over here, and discoveries that I decided, even though I'm not streaming this game, I'm going to make some notes uh, and talk about it and journal it. Now, there is a challenge in doing that. So usually when I stream the game, um, there's two advantages. One, I can go back to the stream, play, th uh, watch through it, and make notes of the things I want to talk about. So right now, I am running everything through memory. I have been making notes on the side when I do play because I've realized, ooh, I got to talk about a lot of things. And the second thing is, I don't have all of the footage of my gameplay. So I do record some clips when there's a cool moment on my Switch, I'll just like record it. But otherwise, we're limited in the amount of footage that is mine that I can show you through these journals. So keep that in mind. But let's talk about the first 10 hours in my experience because I realized as I was playing it, there's so many different ways to enjoy this game and everybody's path and story is going to be very different in how they play it. And so I'm really excited to share my story. I probably will not be reading the comments in this in these videos because of spoilers, uh, but when I get far enough into the game or finish it, I'll come back to this journal and the early ones and comment on those, which could be a few months. So let's get started. I was already quite hyped about this game going in, didn't really know what to expect. My expectations were low in some regards because we're going back to the pretty much the same framework as Breath of the Wild. So how much different could Tears of the Kingdom be? And I have to say within the beginning, how you pretty much start the tutorial area in the Sky Islands and you pick up your powers from shrines and you're learning how to use them. It was the formula of Breath of the Wild all over again. Initially I was, really worried because I'm like, oh, this is just more of the same and I'm not looking for that. I'm kind of looking for more. But then when you land on Hy in Hyrule and you start picking up all these side quests, story beats, little things happening, I realized, woo, they really fleshed out the world here and there's a lot more going on. And that's what really got me excited to really dig deep into this game. So let's start from uh, a story perspective. So, you know, the game starts off uh, Link, I almost said Luke. You're under uh, the castle, you come across Ganondorf, and then he pretty much wakes up. You lose your Master Sword, you lose your hand, you lose your waifu, you lose all your hearts. Where I think it's weird is how Ganondorf was revived. Is it just coincidental that he happened to be revived the moment Link and Zelda walked into that room? Like there was no trigger to really have him revive all of a sudden was it so was it really just bad timing i would have expected you know out of their curiosity zelda or link would have touched something and that's what would have triggered the whole thing whatever we have a mystery and we've lost our arm to the darkness and now we're in the skylands using some someone else's arm why i don't know who is this other dude i don't know this guy in the sky i should have wrote his name down i forget what his name is but anyways i'm intrigued about what's going on so then the sky islands is is like an old ancient world of hyrule i'm all about that i like that but where it really got interesting is when you go back to hyrule in the familiar world that I spent so much time in in Breath of the Wild. And at first I was just kind of going around, going to the stables, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this, is, this isn't this is too interesting. I saw a Korok, which I love the fact now that Koroks, you can stick them to things. The first thing I did is I stuck them in front of a mine cart and I pretty much blasted him. And I didn't care that he was gonna get smushed against the wall because Koroks are invincible anyways. So anyways, what really got me excited is when I came up to the outpost, which is a place where pretty much all of the 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 citizens of Hyrule, if you will, are coming together to kind of rebuild. And I really like the sense of rebuilding, like time has passed, you know, the calamity is gone and now we're rebuilding, but whoops, now we have an upheaval to deal with, which how convenient that this upheaval has somehow removed the shrines, but brought in new shrines, brought in islands in the sky. I try not to question it too much because it's fun, but also lore wise, 
it's like where did all the you know the beasts go the beasts that we reanimated in the last game where are all the shrines from the last game where's all the sheikah technology that we were using again try not to think about it too much because I, it just takes away from the experience but the new stuff is fun i like that we go right away into hyrule castle and then it seems like the big story thing is find zelda but zelda's appearing everywhere around the kingdom as a mirage which i i really don't know what that's about i don't know why for any reason we would want anybody would want zelda like appearing throughout the kingdom whether it's zelda or whether it's like the work of ganondorf so the upheaval happens and off we go into um i decided to go towards rito village because that's pretty much what the game suggests a lot that you do they keep talking about what's going on there uh they talk about the gazette uh, the Lucky Clover Gazette, which is there, which I love the idea that there's now this like journal bureau or a reporter bureau and they're looking for like new recruit. I'm like, I'm in. So I actually did make it all the way to the Lucky Clover Gazette. I saw that there's a frog suit I can win, which prevents you from slipping apparently. I'm like, all right, let's do this. How do we do this? How do we get the stuff? And they're like, visit all the stables and talk to people. I'm like, all right, I'm on it. I can do it. I haven't visited any stables yet. Uh, before I get too much into the things I've discovered, also just quick thoughts on the power-ups. So the Ultra Hand, basically it's, magnesis but for everything uh, i was annoyed with it at first because you can only like getting used to only rotating in two axes is a little bit limiting but once you like figure out how okay I, I only have two axes to work with it becomes a lot faster and the whole like sticky with the goop stuff uh, makes it a lot easier than i thought it would be to stick things together i'm still not very creative on a building front so the whole building mechanic is not that exciting to me like once in a while it's okay but if they start asking me to build too many things back to back um that i'm not so excited about in fact like one thing I loved is as soon as I arrived in Hyrule, you start off right next to like a pile of wood and wheels. I was like, I'm going to make a wagon. And then I stuck a wheel and thing. it looked like a four year old's like craft from kindergarten and it didn't roll. It didn't work or anything. So all my excitement about, oh, I'm going to build something cool just went down. The rewind mechanic, I really don't care about it. Um, it it's there. It's great to go back into the sky. Um, otherwise, I haven't really used it yet. Uh, Ascend, I like. And it's making me realize as I'm exploring the world of Hyrule that the uh, Rivali's Gale from Breath of the Wild was maybe a little bit too OP in the sense that I could explore it. Once I got that, I was using that everywhere to jump in everywhere. Now that you don't have that, but you only have a Sen, which only works in specific areas, makes exploring interesting again you're not overpowered it, you have to be a lot more careful there's a part i was trying to get like across a chasm and i tried landing on like this hill in the middle and then i realized oh i can't use ascend anywhere and i can't i don't have a Rivali's gale and so i kind of had to rethink how to approach things so having more limits you know invites more creativity so i'm all about that i like that fuse i like but every time I need to use it, it's in battle and it's still, I'm not quick enough to pull it out. So I oftentimes get hit once or twice before I figure out what I want to fuse and how I want to fuse. So I really, I think I like fuse a lot. I'm just not good enough at fusing yet. And I still don't know what I want to fuse with what or what's effective yet. So there's a lot of learning going on there. So from the moment I go from, um, so let, let's talk about my little adventure between the Hyrule Outpost all the way to Rito Village, which is where I'm at right now. Uh, so I have already talked about the Lucky Clover, which I made, the Koroks. I did get the wagon draw unlocked, like the thing that lets you connect the horse to a wagon, which that is amazing. I haven't done it yet. I just unlocked it. I'm like, oh, I can't wait till I have a wagon to to connect it to. Speaking of wagons, I saved a guy in a hole. So I came across a hole with some smoke. And I was like, oh, what's going on down here? And there was a dude playing on um, a horn of some kind and they call him a hornist. I don't know if that's a proper term. Can you call someone a hornist? <laughs> Never mind. So that was like a cool implementation of having to build things. I ended up putting like a platform on top of the wagon, putting a little um, balloon and then putting like the fire thing that the, the dragon thing that fires that blows fire under the balloon. We got the wagon. We put the guy in the wagon, got the wagon out and everything was fine. So that was fun. But then he mentioned that there are other band members scattered throughout Hyrule. So this is something I've always loved about the Zelda franchise side quests. And there's so many in the old games. And this one is already starting to open up a world of a lot of things that need to be done to unlock more things, which I'm all about. Uh, I came across a guy who's holding signs, which that got me excited too, because I'm like, oh, he's going around the world, putting up signs and I got to help him. I wasn't ready for how many signs this guy would be putting up. So the first one I saw was at the outpost. I was like, oh, this is a cool like little puzzle. I love it. And then I think I've seen him maybe 10 or 15 times already, just between my adventure of the outpost to the Rito village. Like it has been an obscene amount of time. And I was like, oh, I'm not always in the mood to make a puzzle or on the 
spot and I don't want to skip over it and come back to it. Like I'm like, ah, I'm here. I might as well figure it out. The hardest one was somewhere near Rito village so far. Hardest one for me. And there was like no materials around to use to keep his sign up. I was like, what am I supposed to do? And I thought it was so clever because the only thing that's around are some trees. And so I ended up cutting down some trees, which you can then use the, the tree stump. And there was actually like kind of this like hole that's the perfect size to put a tree stump in it. So I put a tree stump in there and then I like fused a bunch of other trees. So I had like almost like a bracket that was holding it up. That I is when I started appreciating like the complexity of the puzzles that these signs can become the Hudson signs. And I assume if you do them all, something's going to happen. Uh, and I, I also have to go check up on Hudson and what he's up to. So it's all like world building. And I, just, I really love that. Other things that caught me by surprise in that like little stretch of adventure, I came across the, the, so we now have some walking trees, which terrified me the first time I was just minding my own business and a tree walked out at me like, what? Now they can attack you? I love I loved chopping them down though. Not so cool surprise were the gloomy hands. So I, I was in a cave and there was like the pile of glooms and I could see the hands, was not ready for how fast they would be, how spooky the music is and when they touch you, it just like drains your life in a way that you can't heal right away. Oh man, that stuff is freaking terrifying. I hate the gloom hands. Uh, in the in the caves, I've learned that there are these like lizards, glowing lizards, and if you kill them, they drop something, which I'm told if I go to the northeast of the map, somebody collects them. So that's like another quest. I'm like, ooh, can't wait to see what like this whole quest thread's all about. I love how many quest threads there are. Came across Impa in the field and we saw some, some geoglyphs, they call them. I have no idea what these are about. Don't know what it's going to lead to. My quest is there. And for now, I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna have to check out these geoglyphs. Like there's so many things to do, which I love. Uh, it's like, gotta prioritize, gotta prioritize. Can't go too crazy on the side quest right now. There was another thing I came across, which was, it looked like a wooden fort. I was like, oh, what's going on over here? So I went around the fort and I used a scent to go up, which brought me right behind a prison cell with a guy in it. And I did not realize I could have just lifted the cage off the guy and let him run out. I thought I needed a key from a boss. And so this is where I met the, I think they're called boss goblins or something. I don't know. It's a new enemy. They look really cool. And so I destroyed the whole fort. Of course I died once, but anyways, I, I emptied the whole fort. And then I realized the guy was still stuck in the cage. I was like, oh, you just got to lift it. And now he's free. Ah, oh, I could have stealth this, but I didn't know. Anyways, I ended up with some cool weapons and a cool fight. Uh, the recipe mechanic in Tears of the Kingdom, I love that now you can remember it and there's almost like an album of recipe books so you can remember or refer to all your recipes. Uh, so it gives you an incentive to cook different things. I felt Breath of the Wild didn't really have an incentive. Once you knew how to cook hearty truffles, that's all you needed. Just cook all the hearty truffles. It's the easiest ingredient to get and it gives you the most bang for your buck in terms of health. Now though, oh, I've got a collection of recipes to collect sign me up we're gonna experiment we're gonna listen to what people are saying to put together to cook and we're going to fill this recipe book and what else we got so the shrines uh some th early thoughts on the shrines i love how many of them are act like act as a tutorial i love how some of them they strip you of all your your gear and they're pretty much saying okay here's your challenge using only this gear or here's your challenge but you can only use bow or something and those shrines offer a challenge, but they're also offering a learning opportunity to teach you things. Like for example, there was one with the shields and it was all about showing you what you could fuse to a shield and like you can have a fire shield or you can like use the plate on the ground to like just have a big shield that protects you from fire. So I love how that's integrated, um, makes it really interesting. And uh, finally made it to Rito Village. So it seems like there's this massive hurricane going on in the sky or a blizzard. I'm not sure. I have some boots. So the boots are keeping me warm and preventing me from freezing. I don't think it'll work in the blizzard. So I'm slowly making my way up the mountain. Uh, love what they did with the music of Rito Village. It's the theme, but it's been like slowed down and has almost that like I, more ice to it. Like because the whole thing's frozen. It just sounds so nice it, it's like a really nice almost like a christmasy night kind of rendition of it i love what they did there as i was exploring so i, I got to the tower in the hebra region and as i was exploring like gliding around i saw this like three-headed ice dragon which i saw in the trailer so now seeing it in person flying away i'm just like nope i do not want to deal with that i'm 
things are hitting me hard. Like I am just not strong. I don't have enough hearts. I, I, all my weapons are so fragile because everything is rusted in this world, which I really like what they did there. So I just, I, I don't feel strong or courageous and I don't have enough resources to take on anything of that level. And then finally, this is probably the most curious thing I've come across. So in the Hebrew region, I saw a Sakura tree, just kind of, or a cherry blossom tree, um, standing out in the cold, which was weird. I went there and there was like almost an offering thing. So I put an apple in it and then this like godlike deer showed up and he looked out at the mountains and there's all these pillars of light which appeared. No idea what that's about. That's one thing I'm going to check out uh, as I keep playing. I'm going to go see what those pillars of lights are. Really intriguing stuff. I have no idea what that's about. And then other than that, you know, talking about, I think I didn't talk much about the Zonai because um, I'm not hooked in that mechanic yet. Like that whole Sky Island part with the Zonai and like, oh, you can increase your battery charge. You can hold all of these like Zonai parts, like the, the fans and stuff in your pocket. The whole building mechanic hasn't hooked itself onto me yet. And I'm okay. Like it, I feel the game has kind of chilled. So I'm like, okay, I don't need to really use or know this right now. So my next part of the journey is really, I'm going to keep exploring Hebra. I'm probably going to make my way to the blizzard area, assuming I can go there. I don't know if I need more clothes to stay warm or what. And after that, I'm tempted to go to uh, Kakariko Village is where I want to go next and hit up a bunch of stables, continue exploring quests and stuff. So that is my trajectory. That's where I'm at now. I'm not sure when the next journal is going to drop as there's no pledge here. There's no schedule. I'm just going to keep you all updated on my Tears of the Kingdom progress as I slowly make my way through this game that is so enjoyable. So hopefully you'll join me on the next uh, journal or anywhere else on this channel. And until next time, keep it classy.